Two very different countries, but they share a national pastime. To end his trip to Havana, President Obama spent an afternoon at the baseball with his opposite number, President Castro. Both were there to enjoy the game between the Cuban national team and the visiting Tampa Bay Rays. The day had started very differently with a speech broadcast live on state television. President Obama first condemned the terrorist attacks in Brussels before moving on to address the reconciliation with Cuba, acknowledging past problems. Some Americans saw Cuba as something to exploit, ignored poverty, enabled corruption. And since 1959, we've been shadow boxers in this battle of geopolitics and personalities. I know the history, but I refuse to be trapped by it. The president also made reference to how Nelson Mandela's death had helped bring the two countries together. But President Castro and I could both be there in Johannesburg to pay tribute to the legacy of the great Nelson Mandela. And in examining his life and his words, I'm sure we both realize we have more work to do to promote equality in our own countries. President Obama then used his final day in Cuba to meet members of the political opposition at the recently reopened American embassy. That decision almost certainly not popular with Raul Castro, but as Air Force One took off, this trip was being widely hailed as a huge step forward for relations between these two old enemies. President Obama now has to persuade the skeptics in the US Congress to support his plans and lift the embargo with Cuba. But that will be no easy task, and turning the positive words of the last few days into definite official action will require a lot more work. John Beaver, SABC News, Havana.